Good Monday morning! Today we are going to look at the async await keywords, which allows us to pause the execution of functions. And this, in turn, allows us to write asynchronous code that reads like synchronous code. I am NPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function! That means your computer is your friend. It means your learning. I am wearing a blazer today because sometimes you just feel special. Let's begin. I am going to show you some code written with plain promises. We are going to do some fetch. This is built into browsers, but it doesn't exist in, uh, in Node. So we are going to install a Node module. Require little, little, Node fetch, I think it's called. I cannot find module node fetch. No, that's correct because it doesn't exist yet. However, using Quokka, we, uh, which is the inline evaluation thing I'm using, I'm going to install the missing package for only this Quokka file. Hang on. And now it's green. So now we can start to define a function. So what we're doing here is a function in a fictitious uh, cat API app system. So this is going to get the URL of the profile image of a user. Let's call it so that we see what is happening as we go along. So as you see, the call is evaluating to undefined, nothing, no surprises there, but let's start coding it. All right, so as you see here, we get some garble here. Uh, it's, uh, that is because fetch is returning a promise, which will eventually uh, evaluate, uh, resolve, I mean, to a response. So we'll call then on the promise, uh, and uh, we will pass it a function that will take the resolved response, and we will call dot JSON on it. Not unsurprisingly, this parses the response as JSON. So now we see that result is a promise that resolves into this, this JSON thingy here. But we don't want all this, we are just interested in the image URI here. So we are going to call then on the promise, and then we are going to call uh, data, and we are interested in the image URL. Fantastic! The result of fetch avatar URL is now a promise that resolves to the image URI of, of the user. Warning! If you are unfamiliar with promises, this video is going to confuse the hell out of you. So uh, if that's the case, you should watch my promise video first. You can find it here or in the episode description. I am now going to attempt a rewrite of this function using async await. Oh! I'm going to comment out the initial implementation just so that we can keep it in mind while we're doing this. The first thing that we're going to do is to make this function asynchronous. You can notice down here by the way that this now returns a promise that resolves to undefined. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. Okay, let's begin by creating an intermediate variable here called data and I'm going to grab this from the previous implementation and paste here and uh, let's just see what data is at the moment. Okay, so as we see here, it evaluates to a response. So this is a bit, uh, bit misleading. We are looking for the response at the moment. And we can't see it here because it, it crops it, but this is actually not a response. This is a promise that resolves into a response. So uh, I'm going to write a keyword here called await. And this means that the this is now the actual response object. This is not a promise that uh, that resolves to a response. This is the actual response because the function has has paused here uh, and then resumed once fetch has arrived and been resolved to the actual response object. Uh, so let me continue here. 
to actually demonstrate this to you. I'm going to write data here uh, and I'm going to do response.json and I'm going to also evaluate data here. So as you see here, data is now a promise that resolves to the parsed JSON data. So we would not be able to do this here unless this was the actual response. Uh, otherwise, if it had been a promise, we would have to do then response, yada, yada, uh, and then response dot, dot, uh, dot JSON. Uh, but we don't need to do that because this is the actual response object. However, data, let me write that out so that it, come on, yeah, there. Data still evaluates, it's still a promise that resolves to the, um, to the parse JSON data. So I need to write a wait in front of this as well. And boom, now you see that it's no longer a promise. It's the actual, actual, um, actual data. So you see there, I remove the await and it's a promise. But if I add the await, it's now the actual data. So let me uh, delete the response line here. We don't care about that at the moment because now we know what the data is. And I'm now going to do data dot uh, image URL. And we're gonna return that. Boom! And now we see that the result of fetch avatar URL is now a promise that resolves to fetch avatar URL and thus it behaves exactly like our previous implementation here. So now we have rewritten it using async await. I'm going to read you a description of what async await is. I will repeat it at the end of this episode and by then you will hopefully understand it. Inside a function marked as async, you are allowed to place the await keyword in front of an expression that returns a promise. When you do, the execution of the async function is paused until the promise is resolved. <sighs> you got that? If you did, well then, why are you watching this video? Go out and look at nature instead. On the other hand, if you're confused, excellent. Keep on watching. The idea behind the async await keywords is to be able to write a synchronous code that flows like synchronous code. Okay, so that's it really. Uh, let's go back and look at our previous code. Looking at these two, um, it's not completely obvious that this flows in any different way from the, the promise example. Let's examine an example where we have a little bit more nesting. So remember, this is a cat API and all of the users are cat owners. And imagine that we want to fetch the profile images of all the cats that a user owns. So this function will begin just like the previous ones. We will fetch a user and uh, we will parse their JSON data. Okay, so we see here that the user has this array of cats, but the cats are not actual cat data. It is cat, uh, cat IDs, so we need to fetch these cats. So we iterate over the cats, or rather we map over them. Let's see, we want for every cat. Mm -hmm -hmm. How does the cat? All right, the cat are IDs. So they're not really cats. So let's write cat ID because otherwise we'll be confused. Let's fetch that cat. What? Oh, hang on, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, we need the cats and we need the cat ID. 
All right, now we're getting somewhere. They are has in one cat, sniffles, and it has some image URI. Let's return this image URI. Image URL, and we need to remove the curly brackets. Okay, we still have an undefined over here. Uh, it's okay. We're not returning the result of our fetch here. Let's return that. Uh, still nothing. Why not? Okay, we're not returning the result of our map. Let's return that. Okay, that's better. Now we have something. It's an array of promises. Uh, that is not particularly useful because we want the actual resolved values here, not the not the promises. So what what has happened here is that uh, map has uh, went over the cats, and for every cat, it has transformed that cat into a promise of a cat URI. So um, let's put this into an Im immediate intermediate variable first. I will remove this line here and uh, I'm going to remove these curly brackets because we don't need them and we don't need this return statement. Uh, let me just see what promises are. Cool, still this array of unresolved promises. Return. So instead we want to return a promise that uh, resolves to an array where all these promises have been uh, resolved. And to do that, there is a handy function in JavaScript called promise.all that you can pass an array of promises. Boom! Come on! There you go! Let me delete that line because it's just confusing us. And now we see that it's indeed an array of uh, images that contain cat avatars. Awesome! By the way, if you are not familiar with map, this probably confused you a bit. Luckily, I do have a video on map over here and uh, you can also find it in the episode description. What we are going to do next is to rewrite the code that we just saw using a sync await. But before I do, I would like to take a break and make an, an announcement that is way overdue. Some of you know this, but most don't. I had quit my job at Spotify and Fun Fun Function is now very officially my part-time job. Oh. This week on Friday, on Friday morning, I'm going to release a video where I talk about the launch of a Patreon for Fun Fun Function. And more importantly, I'm also going to talk about the launch of Fun Fun Forum. I'm really really excited about this and in that video I will be talking more about what Fun Fun Forum is. But the important thing, the important thing that you need to uh, have in mind is that if you become a patron this month, August, uh, last day is the 31st, you will get next to your name a special forum badge. A permanent special badge that for eternity shows you that you were one of the first patrons of Fun Fun Function. After August 31st, nobody will get these badges ever. It will be a very, very ugly badge that I will probably have hand drawn with a pen. It will absolutely positively not be worth your money. So for the love of God, only do it if you want to support Fun Fun Function. And if you want a special forever for a maternity badge of infinite value. Back to the ordinary scheduled programming. Where were we? Okay, let's rewrite this function using async await.
All right, so let's walk through this one. Uh, first, it uses a wait here to wait until we have the data. And then it uh, parses JSON, waits for that. And then when we have the user data, it constructs uh, an empty array of cat image URIs to hold them. And then it starts looping the cats array of the user. And for every cat ID, it's going to uh, do a fetch. And then it's going to wait for that fetch to complete. Uh, and uh, which resolves into a response, which it then calls .json on. It waits for that to resolve into the actual cat data. And then it takes the image URI on the cat data uh, and pushes that to the cat image URIs. And it does that for every uh, cat. Uh, and then it returns the cat image URIs. And that is what we see here in the result. Again, you don't see it here because it's, it's, uh, it's cropped here, but this is not the actual result. This is the promise uh, of, a, uh, of a result that eventually resolves into the result. The first thing that strikes me when I look at this code is there's a B in here. What strikes me when I compare the async await uh, example with the promise example is that the async await example is a lot less straightforward, which I ironically wrote not straight. The code here, it, it flows in a very human readable manner, at least to me. The second thing that you should notice is that they are not logically equivalent. If you notice that, it means you have eyes. Good job, eyes. The async await example, it will load the cats in sequence, uh, while the uh, promise example will load them in uh, parallel. So the promise example here is a lot, lot faster. I wrote it like this because I want to demonstrate that a wait only works for single promises. It cannot wait for multiple promises. Initially, when I was exposed to a sync await, I felt that it was a little bit useless. How do I put this? Okay, I could totally see how async await was useful for simple scenarios and how it could make the code flow in a more approachable manner. But at the same time, it wasn't as flexible as raw promises. So it just felt like a bad deal to me. But I came around eventually because I realized that you can just fall back to raw promises when async await uh, limits you. And I'm going to do that here. I'm going to delete this comparison comment and I'm going to actually comment out this bit here. Okay, let's write this. code I'm good at the code by the way I wrote that from a script I, I don't actually I didn't make that up on the spot just so you know all right so what you see here is promises uh, raw promises and a sync await mixed a little bit together this code is going to be a little bit confusing if you are new to a sync await so I I recommend that you at this point pause the video uh, a little bit and look at this code and try to get familiar with what is happening before continuing. Okay, freeze frame. Okay, so what probably was the most challenging part of this thing to grasp is that we are passing an async function to map. We can do this because, I, as I briefly mentioned before, uh, async functions return a promise when you call them. Let's look at a much simpler case to examine that. I'm going to write a function and it's going to be a party function and it's going to return poop and we're going to call the party function result and we're going to see what we're writing. It's poop. But what if we make the function a zinc? Then result will be a promise that resolves to poop. An async function will always return a promise, which makes sense because it's asynchronous. But let's go back to where we were before. 
Let me delete this because it's mostly just distracting. In this example, we have mixed raw promises into our uh, await example because we want to fetch things in parallel. But for a minute, I want us to like think in the other direction. What if we didn't want things to happen in parallel? What if we had a case where we wanted things to happen in sequence? Let's imagine that we have a batch script that uh, processes a few hundred thousand users. And our imaginary batch script looks like this. Has a SQL query. Uh, it uh, does this database query. It gets a promise, gets some users, and then it loops through the users. And then for every user, it processes the user and it awaits for every process to uh, to complete a resol resolve uh, before it continues. So process user, you have to imagine that that returns a promise. So in this case, we have a lot of users. So we don't want to create a hundred thousand requests at the same time. So in this case, it makes for this simple case, we just want to do this uh, sequentially. Here, a wait makes a lot of sense. We can absolutely do this with promises, but I imagine that it will be a bit awkward. I shall attempt to rewrite this using promises. In the last example, we actually had a fake real service with real data, real fake data. But in this case, this is just imaginary. So uh, you're not going to see any correct inline evaluation going on here. It's just going to be my refactory. Boom! Functional programming reduced! What do you think? This compared to this. To be honest, I, I, I don't think it's... Th this is less bad than I anticipated it to be, to be honest. I think it's really a testament to the flexibility of reduce. But it is still very clear that the uh, async await uh, example is just a lot nicer. Let's summarize! First, we looked at what a sync await is. Inside a function marked as a sync, you are allowed to place the await keyword in front of an expression that returns a promise. When you do, the execution of the async function is paused until the promise is resolved. We then talked about why a sync await exists. And the idea with a sync await is to be able to write asynchronous code that flows sort of like synchronous code. And then we spent some time looking at how to actually use it. So did I explain this well enough? Did you understand? If it's unclear, that's cool. Just post a comment down below. If it is clear to you, then please help someone else out. Teaching is the best way to learn. Remember that the Patreon video launches on Friday morning. So if you want, please do become a patron. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you don't want to wait for the next episode, you can watch this episode right now that the AI overlords have selected totally with your best interests in mind. I am MPJ, until Friday morning. Stay tuned.